What up, fam? Welcome to Skill Tree, where we learn how to do just about everything. Now, well, you, fair viewer, may be watching this episode in some comfortable future date. The digital me here in this episode is firmly stuck in April of 2020 during the COVID-19 pandemic. It's a frightening and largely boring time in which every responsible person is doing their part to stop the spread by just staying home. That being said, as most of us aren't sustenance farmers or preppers, which as an aside, and I never thought I'd have to say this, hey preppers, Good call, guys. But yeah, since most of us don't fall under either of these camps, we're eventually gonna have to venture out into the wilds to resupply food and whatnot. In such events, the CDC now recommends that when you go out, you're wearing some kind of a face covering that covers your nose and your mouth. So I figured, boom, covered. But then I realized showing up to Market Basket like one of the four horsemen would probably be in poor taste. Although I'm not gonna lie, stuff some fabric in here, this would probably work pretty good. <laughs> so I reached out to Tony over at Diesel Punk, which is where I got the pattern for this beautiful mask, and he hooked me up with the pattern for this gorgeous mask. This sleek and stylish design will have all of the other viral shoppers wanting to break all those pesky rules of social distancing. But don't you let them six feet apart, people. Come on now. Anyways, today I'm gonna show you how this sexy little mask comes together. And then I show you an easy way to make it your own with just a little monkey flare. That's right, I made two. That's my going out mask and like my purge mask, I guess. <laughs> and finally, I'm gonna show you how to seal this sucker up and throw on some filter material to make it a really effective mask. Or at least what I think will be an effective mask. I'm not a professional. I just make things on the internet. Now we do level up skills on this show and we've already covered a lot of leather. So the odds are most of the techniques that I'm gonna be going over here today are in previous episodes. So if I do anything you're not sure about, check out this playlist here and the odds are it's already covered in a lot of detail. Cool, with all that set up out of the way, it is time to level up this skill. Prepping the leather. For starters, I printed out Diesel Punk's pattern for this build. And I gotta say, I am continually impressed with how good his patterns are. Now that's a skill I need to learn. I really need to learn how to make these nice patterns. For now though, I took my trusty scissors and roughly cut the patterns out. Now there's no need to be too careful in like cutting these out really precisely. From watching one of Tony's video, I learned actually a pretty cool little trick. By adding masking tape to hold everything in place, you can use the patterns as they are to guide your punches and your cuts. The masking tape is just translucent enough to let you see the marks underneath. Now I'm sure for some of you, you're like, yeah, bro, obviously. I honestly never put that together. I like traced everything out really carefully after having cut it out really carefully and then held it in place and punched all the holes. I didn't even think of just, just taping that sucker to the leather and then just using it. I missed that boat, apparently. <laughs> With everything free and looking right, I went back in and punched all of my holes. Now, as you can see here, I punched my stitch holes with an awl instead of a hole punch. Now, because I am making this mask specifically with the pandemic in mind, I really wanted to have tight control over how and where air flows into this thing. By using the tip of the awl to make my holes, I ensure that the holes are just big enough for a needle to fit through. Now, this makes the sewing process an absolute pain because I'm trying to fight to get the needles into every hole, but the waxed thread gets doubled up in all of these holes and does a really good job sealing everything in. This forces the air to take the path of least resistance through my filtered holes here. Once all of that was knocked out, I wet all of my edges and use my slicker brush to make them all smooth and sexy. For my final bit of prep, I decided to dye all of my pieces with this saddle tan antique gel. And before you guys give me hell in the comment section for using an antique gel as my primary dye, I have two things to say about that. One is the results are still super pretty. The tan goes on really even and I really just like the color in general. And two, I have run out of the actual dye for this stuff. I used the last of it on my last project and apparently Tandy Leather is not considered essential to be open right now. Hashtag first world leather problems, I guess. So sad. <laughs> I also decided to add a few layers of resist to both the front and the back. This will provide a nice shine as well as seal the leather up a bit, making it much easier to clean. And we will need to clean this every time we go out. More on that later though. Ha, <laughs> moron. Moron, that later though. <laughs> Stupid, moron. And with that step done, the prep work is all completed and we can move on to assembly. 
First things first, I need to punch these holes for proper airflow. I use these half inch eyelets to dress up these holes a bit. Just put them in the holes and use the recommended anvil and striker to lock them into place. With those assembled, it's time to get our stitch on and combine the cheek pieces and the center nose part. To do this, I just use a basic saddle stitch, ensuring everything was sealed tight as I went. This stitch is just super strong and it looks really good too. Like, look at those nice clean lines. Those are gorgeous. I love those. Next up is this bottom kind of neck guard bit here. And at first glance, you would think that it wouldn't fit together. But using the saddle stitch again, I was quickly able to see how this bit actually supplies the shape of the mask. And let's be honest, the shape is dope. So I remember there were bits like this in the plague mask too, where like this stitch came together and, and actually forms the whole shape and arc of this beak. And again, hat off to Tony from Diesel Punk for that because the thought that has to go into like, it's gonna be shaped like this. So I have to make my cuts this way. Um, that's some advanced planning right there. Like that's super impressive to me. Again, I really need to learn how to do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna devote some time into that right there. So next we need to sew this little nose piece here together. For this, I'm using this nice ladder stitch that leaves these little X's in the back and these horizontal bars in the front. I'm not sure of this stitch's real name, but the look is undeniably slick. All right, so for our last little bit of stitching, we're gonna be adding this little face cushion that goes around the top here. In our leather inventory, there's the piece that looks like this. It just needs to be bent in half like so. Again, we use the saddle stitch here, passing the thread through all three holes to lock this sucker into place. And look at how dope that is. The lines are gorgeous and the whole thing fits like a post-apocalyptic dream. So remember how I punched all these stitch holes with an awl? Because of that, I had to really struggle to get the needle and the thread through here. So the footage of me actually doing that and kind of walking through the stitch would have been really hard to follow. Luckily, I cover both the stitches used here in really good detail in this video here. I'll leave timestamps in the description here to exactly when those stitches are covered in case you want to go check that out. And that right there is like the hardest bit all done. That's most of the mask. All the rest of it, these straps and buckles are just put together with rapid rivets. I love using these things. They just snap together really easily and they hold super strong. Just connect the long strap and the long buckle line here to the mask's lower tabs and the two shorter belt straps to the mask's upper tabs. The headpiece here gets two buckles added in with these little keeper pieces we cut out earlier. All put together, this bad boy is absolutely beautiful. And it's super comfortable too. In fact, again, I found it so nice, I made it twice. Yes, behold, my monkey mask of amazing. So the initial thought here was to put the cheek and nose pattern together to form one piece, thus eliminating all the extra holes from the stitches. With all that extra room though, I had room to trace in a fun design. So I did. Then as you do, I went back in and cut it all out with my swivel knife. I also punched in air holes to control the flow and tooled my design with the beveler and the background tool to give the whole thing depth. Now the only three dye colors that I actually did have on hand was this black that I used for the mouth and the nose, this pretty ox blood that I used for the tongue, the sides of the mouth, and the nostrils, and finally some mahogany for all the rest of the face. Now though I have a lot of the black dye, I barely had enough of the other colors to finish this whole project here. Just, just scraping the bottom of the barrel. I need to buy some more dyes. So I just dip dyed the trim and all the straps black. And I'm really glad I did. One, because I like the color contrast here. And two, dip dyeing is just awesome. It always comes out super clean. Finally, I sprayed on a resist and use a brown antique gel just to make all of my details pop. The rest of the assembly was exactly the same as the first build. I just sewed everything together and attached all of my straps with rivets. So now I have my fancy going out social mask and my you're far too close step the hill back mask. Alas, both of them just as they are offer zero protection. All the holes I have in them just kind of let air in and out super freely. So aside from style, they don't do anything. <laughs> to change that, let's make a simple filter. Quick note to throw in here before we make our filter. Now the CDC recommends you wear masks mostly to protect other people. So there's a rather large portion of the population that will be asymptomatic, meaning you might have the virus, but you won't show any outward signs of it. So that means you could be spreading it around and you don't even know you are. 
by covering your mouth and nose, you help make sure that no like spit particles or anything get into the air infecting other people. It also keeps you from touching your face and then touching other things, which is also a really good way to spread this thing. So to that end, you could really just fill this thing with some kind of a tight weave cotton or some sort, and that will take care of that whole you expelling things out portion. But some recent research has shown that with proper filtering, you can reduce the chances of you actually catching it when it's airborne. Just remember though, it can still enter through the eyes. Just wearing a face mask is by no means a fail safe way to stay protected. There is absolutely no replacement for proper social distancing and hygiene practices. So because I researched the hell out of everything, I spent like five hours looking up different materials that would work well for this process. Well, in the annals of the internet searching for this, I stumbled across this doctor who was actually making these masks for his colleagues. Link in the description if I can find it. It was a really obscure, like scholarly kind of website. After seeing that though, I promptly went to my local hardware store and picked up this bad boy. That is a filter that you use for your AC system in your house. It even shows on this little guy that it can filter viruses out. Just exactly what I wanted to do. So, you know, perfect. But before you give this a try, you need to check a few things. First and foremost, check to make sure the filter you pick up is not made out of fiberglass. Some are, and you absolutely do not want to be breathing fiberglass in. Really bad for you. Secondly, you need to check the MERV rating. This stands for the Minimum Efficiency Reporting Value. It essentially just says how effective that filter is from removing things from the air. What you're looking for is a rating of 13 and above. Anything below that will not be effective in removing particles as small as a virus. Finally, take note in which way the air flows through your filter. Mark that side so you don't lose track of which one it is. You're gonna want that side to be facing you so that you're breathing in filtered air. Now to prepare your filter, first cut and remove the outer cardboard rim. Next, hold the filter down with one hand and pull up on the metal wire to release the adhesive. Then carefully pull the cage off. As you're pulling that wire off, be really careful because the outer edges are not covered by anything and that stuff is really sharp. So just be careful. As you can see, now you have plenty of filter material to work with. With this stuff alone and some judicious placement of like staples and straps, you can just make that into a face mask. I just think this looks cooler. Now to size everything to fit into the mask, I used the same nose and cheek pattern from earlier and marked where I wanted the filter to end. Then I folded it in half and cut it to shape. Using it as a pattern, I traced it on some cotton that I had from my cloak build and carefully cut it out with some shears. I did this again, giving me a front and a back piece. Then using one of those pieces as a pattern, I cut the same shape out of my filter material, again marking the side that was to face me. Now I simply sandwich them together and place them into the mask. Two things here. One, you don't really need the cotton. I just didn't really like the way the filter fabric felt against my face. Kind of has little loose things that tickled my nose a lot. And two, although it looks like lazy just to kind of shove everything in there, I found that it just sticks really well. Originally, I was going to add like strapping or some little Velcro things inside of there, but I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Especially because you are going to want to throw away this filter material after every use and wash that fabric. That being said, I suppose you could make like a little pocket out of the fabric, so you just stuff it with the filter material. Up to you how crazy you wanna go with it, but for my purposes, I'm fine with just kind of putting it in there. Oh, and while we're talking about washing things, you're gonna to wanna to wash your mask as well. Just lightly wash them with simple soap and water. You, know, you don't have to drench it or get the leather super soaked, just kind of do a surface cleaning, make sure you get soap on there and do it just like your hands. Taking 20 seconds to make sure you've broken apart that viral particle that might be on there. Now as an added bonus to the efficacy of this whole thing, I learned that medical professionals undergo a thing called a fit test. This is where they check to make sure that all of their respirators and masks positively seal around their face so any air they breathe in has to go through the filter of that mask first. My ghetto version of this process was to cover up all my holes and then try to breathe and see where the air kind of comes in through. By doing this, I learned that this area right here around my nose just leaked like a sieve. So to combat this, I simply used this adhesive weather seal around the rim of my mask. Upon trying again, it was super hard to get any air into the mask. In fact, you can even see the mask suck in as I try to pull in air. Of course, bear in mind, I am not a professional. There are people who like went to school to learn how to make these things appropriately. We're just in a really funny place right now where even if you come across a professionally made mask, that should be sent to your local hospital. There are people who are in contact with this stuff all the time who really need those masks. 
As such, all us little DIYers are stuck kind of trying to make our own. So yeah, not a professional. I'm just some dude on the internet who likes to make cool stuff. That being said, I don't know why this wouldn't work. Um, when I breathe in through it, nothing comes from around the edges. I can feel all the air coming through here and coming through the filter material. If you could come up with any ideas to kind of improve the design, I would love to hear it. Leave it down in the comment section. Also, if you like the project or just kind of like what I'm doing here, why don't you give me some of that thumbs up love and do not forget to subscribe so you know when I release new content. Also, if there's a skill you want to see covered, leave it in the comment section and I will add it to the list. Finally, again, special thanks to Tony over at Diesel Punk for letting me use his patterns for this show. You can find a link to his pattern and his general site down in the description below. All right, well, I gotta get going. I have both a photo op and a robbery to commit. In the meantime, keep leveling up, you.